Hello friends, my name is Miss Mary Beth and I'm going to be your art teacher today. Today we're going to learn all about an artist named Henry Matisse. Let's go to the PowerPoint and find out what's there. Henry Matisse. This painting is called Zora on the Terrace, and it was painted in 1912. What do you notice about Zora in this painting? How does this painting make you feel? What other items are in the painting with her? And can you tell what time of day it is? Or is it night? What does the lighting show you in this painting? Henry, Henry Matisse was a French artist. He loved to make art. He created nine goldfish paintings. Can you find the goldfish in this room? What else do you see in this painting? What's unique about it? Did you notice that there is the interior of the room and there's also an exterior out the window? Sometimes artists will do that. They'll paint a whole nother painting outside of a window. Henry Matisse was famous for this. This painting is called Goldfish and Palette and was created in 1914. In this painting, he created a close-up of goldfish. They are bright in contrast with the darker background. This painting is just called Goldfish and was created in 1912. And you'll notice how the goldfish really pop out. He used the orange in juxtaposition with the darker green, which made a lot of contrast. When you can see something easily in art, we call it contrast. Matisse started painting goldfish when he got back from a trip from Morocco. The Moroccans had a slow and meditative lifestyle. They would often gaze into their fish bowls. And this piece is called Arab Coffee House, and it was painted in 1912 to 1913. What do you notice about this coffee house? Is it like the coffee houses we have here? Does it seem excited there or very calm? How do you think it would be to have goldfish at a coffee house that you just sat and watched? How do you think it would make you feel? The cats in this painting like to watch the fish too. This cat is very close. Do you notice how he caught the image of the cat through the water and how that changed how the cat was drawn? If you'll notice here, the cat's body seems very small, but in the fishbowl, it seems very big. Water causes the face to become magnified, like a magnifying glass. Henry Matisse noticed this and painted it when he painted the fish. You'll also notice that once again, he made the interior of a room and then through the window, we have a whole nother scene. And this piece is called Interior with Goldfish and was painted in 1914. Henry Matisse's fish paintings remind us to slow down and breathe. This piece is called Young Woman Before an Aquarium and was painted in 1921 to 1922. So I think it might be nice for us to make our own fish aquarium so that when we want to stop and just contemplate and breathe, we can do it too. So what you're going to need today is 
any kind of piece of paper, a pencil, a marker, a crayon, something to draw with, whatever you have around the house. Let's go to our drawing board. All right, so the first thing we're gonna end up doing here is we're gonna find the middle line of our paper and then we're gonna drop down just a little ways and we're gonna make a little smile, just a gentle little smile. And on each side of our smile, we're gonna just draw two straight lines. It's the beginning of our fishbowl. Now we're gonna take and make a smile, a very gentle one between our two lines. And then we can take and make a small little rainbow over the top. And that gives us our basic fishbowl. We can also put the lip of the fishbowl and we can drop down just a little ways and make another little smile. And then we can drop down just a little ways below our little rainbow and make another rainbow. And now our fishbowl has a rim. We could also add a water line, which would be just another little smile underneath. So let's go ahead and add a few fish in here. I'm gonna add three fish into mine and I'm gonna make them in the style of Henry Matisse. So when he made fish, he made um, basically just a squished U shape. We would add a little dot for an eye. And then out of the tail, he made two lines that went out. Between the two, he put a little dot and then drew and connected those lines in. Now, if you wanna make a different style fish, feel free. I know this is a very simple fish and you might wanna do something a little more sophisticated. It's completely up to you. But let's put in a couple more fish and I'm gonna make a few more Henry Matisse style. So I'm gonna make a squish you with a little eyeball, two lines that go out, make a dot between them, connect in. I'm gonna make one more up here. I'm gonna make a squished U with a dot. Two lines going out. Dot in between. And I'm gonna connect them. Now I've got my basic fish. Now I'm also gonna put in the, the back um, bowl line. And I wanna make a little arch here, a little rainbow, but I don't wanna go over that fish. So when I get to the fish, I'm gonna hop over it and then just continue over. I'm also gonna finish my water line up here. And this is a little bit trickier. I wanna be able to make an arch shape going across through here, but I don't wanna go through my, um, the rim of my painting. So I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna hop, I'm gonna make my arch, I'm gonna bring it in. And now I've got my fish are in a water bowl, okay? If I wanted to put the reflection of the fish in there, I could just take and make a couple of little squishy blobs, one for each of my fish. Now I've got a beautiful, sophisticated fish bowl. Now my fish though are floating out in the middle of nowhere. So let's put them on a table. I'm gonna come up about halfway and I can make a little mark and about halfway and make a little mark so I know where I'm going to, okay? And then I'm gonna come a little ways down. I want, it, I want there to be some space on my table to add some plants. So I'm gonna make a little mark down below too. Now that I have my mark, I can just take and make a squish circle. And now there's a table for my fish to sit on. We're gonna put some table legs. So we're gonna take and put in a curved line and another curved line and there's one table leg. 
I could add another curved line and another curved line and there's my second table leg. And it might be nice for it to have a little support structure. So I can take and put a support structure there. If I wanted to get really fancy, I could put an arch support structure underneath there as well. So we now have our fish and we have our table. Now I want to start to work on the background of the painting. Okay, so we're going to be putting in some plants, some big leaf shapes. Now you can put in any kind of plants you want. So if you have your own ideas, I want you to just really go for it and have fun. If you want, you can follow along with me. I'm going to start over here on this side and I'm going to make kind of a big heart shape. And my heart's going to go a little ways off the paper. You can see I have kind of a big leaf shape there. I can make a line down my leaf with a couple of little, little leaf lines. And then I can take and make a stem. And I'm going to have just my stem tucking in behind my fishbowl. And let's make another big heart shape one over on this side. So I'm going to make one part of my heart, make another part. I can make the lines going down. And this one, we're not going to be able to see the stem up here. This stem is actually wrapping down underneath here. So we've got two big kind of heart shape leaves happening. Now let's add some up here. And we're going to take and make almost like a water drop, a little bit of a dent in the bottom if you want to make this style of leaf, but we're going to make a big leaf there. Once again, add a few lines. And we can add in a stem. Going to add one over here. This one I'm going to actually tuck in behind this one a little bit. You can do whatever you want. Give my leaf some style. And if you want, now this is a little tricky. If you want, you can just make your stem going over here, but sometimes it's fun making stems hop behind. And so when you get to the next stem, you just have to hop over it. You can try it if you want to, or you can just bring it over here if that's easier. I think I want one more little leaf. And then I'm going to have this one tucked behind too as well. And then I'm going to give it a stem. And this corner feels really full to me now. It's very peaceful, very calm. So I'm going to leave that area. And now I'm going to move over into this section. And I'm going to put in a few flowers. So I'm going to take and make a little rainbow shape. And then I'm going to make some little lumps and add on a little lump there too. Now, once again, I need to have a stem and this stem is going to arch over. And I'm going to add little leaves onto it. And if you want to make a different style of flower, you make any kind of flower you want. I'm going to make another one right here. Make a little arch with a few little lumps. Let's put a little half circle on there. And I'm going to make my stem with a few leaves. Let's add in a couple more. Add in my stem with a few leaves. And I think I've got room for one more. And it might be kind of fun to have one actually going off the page. And if that happened, you wouldn't see the whole stem. You would only see part of it. So now we have our background done. We have our midground and our background. 
Now let's go ahead and put in um, a little bit more in our mid-ground. I'd like to add maybe a couple of plants onto our table. To add a plant, I'm gonna first take and make a leaf shape off to the side and another leaf shape off to the side. Now underneath this, I'm gonna put two lines going down and then I'm gonna make a little smile. It gives me my pot and I'm gonna make a little smile up above too. And I've got some more room up here, so I think I'm gonna actually add in one more leaf. So you can see I have one little plant there. I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing. I'm gonna make a leaf shape off to one side and a leaf shape off to the other. I take two lines going down and add a little smile underneath. Add in another little curve there too. And I notice I still have room, so I'm gonna take and add in another leaf. You could take and put lines on your leaves if you want to, just like we did on the leaves up above. So now our background is full, our mid-ground is full. Now we're gonna go ahead and add a few things into our foreground. We're gonna come up close. So the first thing we're gonna add in is a curved line. So we're gonna start up high, we're gonna drop down, and then we're gonna curve over by our table leg. And yours can be its own style. Kind of making a little fence here. We're gonna take and bring in another one. Now we're gonna add a great big U. And underneath that U, we're gonna make another U. There we go. It's the beginning of our fence shape. Let's make another one. We're gonna add a U. And then add in an, oops. And then we're gonna add in another U. And if you have room, you could make one more. Make a U upside down you, and then add in another one. And we have a little bit of more of a space here, so I think it might be nice to add some, uh, some lilies. So to make a lily, we're gonna start first with a teardrop shape. So it's kind of like a curved in U with a triangle on the top. And then off to the side, I'm gonna make another upside down triangle and then curve it over. And on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna put in a couple of those. And then I'm gonna take and put it on a lily. And I could even make another lily right next door to it if I'd like. Let's make another one of these flowers. So I start, you can start with a triangle shape if you want, and then put a curved circle on the bottom. And then we're going to add more on each side. And put it onto a calla lily or onto a lily pad. Maybe add another lily with it. I think I'm going to put in one more flower. If you want to do other kinds of flowers, you're more than welcome to. I'm making this one a little smaller. If you want to add in some extra lily pads, you can. So now we have our foreground, our midground, and our background. And we have this beautiful, quiet place to contemplate our fish. So when we want to stop and breathe, like the Moroccans of North Africa, we can too, just by looking into our fishbowl. If you want to take any color into this, you can use crayons, markers, paint, uh, colored pencils, anything you have. Let me show you the one that I colored in, and I just use crayons for mine. And I just use some simple colors.
I hope you enjoyed this drawing lesson and learning about Henry Matisse. And I look forward to seeing you the next time. Have a beautiful day.